beer, 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 virulence, beer, beer, viru, virulence, beer, virulence, beer, virulence, 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 virulence. Virulence. Are you coming back to school with me? We could have done it all so easily. Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I am your host on Teaching with Board Games. Today I'm taking a look at Virulence by Genius Games. So if you're not familiar with Genius Games, then what the, one thing that they, I feel they do really well is these science games where they have different things like virulence, they have ion, a compound building game, cytosis, and um, these kinds of games, they teach you the science behind whatever topic it is, whether it's ions and, and, um, and compounds, or if it's you know, the, the cellular biology, or um, they, they even have a game on the periodic table of elements, which I'm still uh, looking to get my hands on. But they do this kind of thing where they, they take these things, which to my mind is just like, you know, how are you gonna make a game about the periodic table of elements? That's crazy. But uh, they just, they pull it off. They do really well with it. And the, 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 like, um, like the other ones I've tried were, were excellent. So look back to good things from me here, Genius Games. Let's see if they live up to it as I take you into the report card. So looking at the number of players for virulence, I'm going to give it a B plus. My standard for the B is between two to four players. This plays between two to five players. So that gives it the B plus. For learning, I'm going to give the game a B plus. I think this game is great. Again, Genius Games does what they do. They take a, a concept of like, you know, viruses and the things within viruses and the, you know, how they build and such and make it in such a way that it's, it's into a game and then it becomes more encouraging to learn because you're pl learning through the play of the game. Now, what this game lacks that the other games like Cytosis and Ion a Compound Building game have is more of that knowledge and understanding of how it works. Like they, they talk here about the different parts of the viruses and mutations in the viruses and you know things like uh, vaccines and, and um, spherical envelopes and things like that. But you're learning a lot of the terminologies and to me what this game would be great for is an entrance into the lesson so as you are talking about uh, as you're playing the game you're learning all these ideas and as you're doing the things it really sort of opens it up and so now as you talk about the spherical envelope and the um, the other things that are in here the conical whatever's uh, sorry I'm not a really big science guy but again you see like you know I never I had no clue before playing this game what a spherical envelope was now I now I do and I'm I have I've read up a little bit about it to have a better understanding of it. So it, it not only inspires people, to, not only prepares people to learn, but it may also inspire them. Like I said, it did for me. When I read about this thing, okay, this, this looks kind of interesting. Is this what I think it is? And I mean, it really is. When you think about spherical, ball, envelope, you put things inside an envelope, and that's what it is. It's a, it's a protective layer outside a virus that's you know, ball-shaped. So you see, and these kinds of things in the playing and the pictures on the cards, beautiful cards on the inside, by the way, it all makes it come together in a way that makes the learning happen. So, uh, like I say, it's not explaining how it works like it does with Cytosis and some of the other games, but it's still giving that good primer into the learning. It would be definitely something I would be considering if I was a high school level science teacher. Boy, I feel bad for my kids. I know nothing. For fun, I'm going to give the game a B plus. I think the game's a lot of fun. It's a um, one of these games where you're, you're drafting, but your drafting is done in a priority order based on the cards you're putting down. And I mean, you'll see all of this when I show you how the game is played. Um, and it, so there's a lot of strategy in there because you are choosing the cards you're putting down and you have control. You don't, the only thing that's random is the cards that are coming up each round and you're bidding on them like based on your cards. I just find that sometimes when a game has too much of a random element, then it stops being fun for me because you win because you were lucky as opposed to win because you had some good ideas and you played well. So this game allows for that good gameplay to come through and um, 
the, the different paths you can take towards victory and the different things that come up. I mean, it's to me, it's it's a it's a solid game. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and definitely hundred percent, a thousand percent, this is going to be more fun than learning this kind of stuff from a textbook. For time, I'm going to give the game a B plus. Uh, give it the B plus because it's very quick, fifteen to twenty minutes. Now the thing is, is that where it sort of slows down then because I mean this to me is great for a lot of games are going to take much longer than that however there is a lot uh, you know in terms of the setup of the cards that you have to make sure everybody's getting their certain you know combinations correctly for their starting hands then you have to make sure that you separate different piles into different things and it just it's going to be a little bit for the setup so I mean it's going to be you know take a little bit for the setup more so than some other games nothing big I mean I mean you're still giving it a B plus which I think is fantastic it's just it's not exceptional. A's are your exceptional mark, and while it's a quick game, like I say, the, the setup and everything is just going to take a bit of time. So if you're looking at, like for me, like a 40 minute period, not, you know, depending on how long your periods are, I'm using 40 minutes as kind of my benchmark here, I wouldn't be expecting to get more than one play of the game in during a period. But like I say, it's great for, you know, maybe you kids come in, you show them how to play, they play, and then that might take the period just for the first day of learning how to play and playing. The next day they come in, they play again, already knowing how to play and then you go into the instruction and, and so say okay now that we've learned some of these things what are some of the things you you, you you pulled out of this what are some understandings that you have of viruses let's go and you, the, the teaching happens after that point so overall like I say it's it's um, quick quick game and that's great B plus for cost I'm going to give it a B plus uh, you can pick this game up at level up games for 22.95 which to me is a great uh, price for a game. There's not a lot to it. There's no board. This game is just cards and a few dice and the dice have are, are um, customized to have like um, a little virus symbol or on a contagion symbol on the, the six space. So but so there's really not a lot to this just the cards and everything um, but you know it's 2295 is not bad so if you're looking to get multiple copies of this to, to play as I say if you want to do as a whole class at once then it's certainly something that you could do without you know breaking the bank. You know, two to five players. If you have a class of say twenty-five to thirty students, that's five six copies. You're looking at just uh, hundred hundred twenty dollars, somewhere around there. So, not too bad. Well, I guess then tax on top of that, but not too bad. B plus. All right, let me take this game to the table and I will show you how it is played. I'm showing a setup here of um, a game of virulence. So what you have is you, you, every player is going to have a set of cards, these seven cards, and everybody starts with the same seven cards. You have your virus cards between one to six with the number at the top, and then you have your reassortment card, and the reassortment card is what you're going to use to get all your cards back again once you've, once you've been using them. Uh, you have your deck of cards here. These are what the players are going to be bidding for each turn. And then you have these four bonus cards and it says to just get rid of, you know, one of the cards randomly at the start of the game and just put it back in the box. Okay, so then you're going to flip over the top one. So this is icosahedral bonus of plus six. So whoever gets the icosahedral set first gets a bonus of six to this. So this is another added thing to be looking for. So like I'm saying, it doesn't really sort of explain the icosahedral, but this is something that you'll learn through the course of the game. So I'm just going to put these aside. Now, you don't have to shuffle these because the players are going to have full autonomy over which card they are choosing every turn. It's not random. Although I might, I'm just going to be doing a little bit random at the beginning just to, um, just so that we, just showing some different things. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. So the cards, you're going to start off here with, the, with your, with your um, deck here. You're going to be putting out a cards equal to the number of players in the game. So here we have three cards. So we have a vaccine. Now vaccines are bad because we're viruses. So the last thing we want is a vaccine. So somebody's going to be taking a minus two points. And then somebody's going to be getting a level eight mutated virus. And you saw our highest card in our decks to begin with was a six. So this is, this is a more powerful one. And this is a wild card with helical and icosahedral. As you're going for sets to make either a helical set or an icosahedral set, then this is, can count as one card towards either of them. And remember, the icosahedral is going to give you a bonus of plus six. That's not a bad card. So these two are great cards. This one is yucky. So with the vaccine there, the players are really going to be interested in making sure that they take the card as highest as they can 
without, you know, because they don't want to be stuck with that one. So they, you know, looking at their hands, they, they probably want to take like the five or the six because you have to, you're going to use all these cards and at some point you can use the reassortment card here and then get all your cards back again. But, you know, I think what's going to happen is most of the players are going to go for a six. So we're just going to, you know, just, so every player puts their card face down and so let's say this player goes with the five instead. Okay, so everybody flips over and this person underbid, so oopsie. And so now two people are tied. So whoever has the highest gets to pick first. So now two people who are no, the people for the tie are tied for highest. So now what happens now is everybody's going to roll two dice. And so I rolled a two and a four for this player. So they have a total of six. And that this player rolls a six and a four, giving them a 10. So even though they have tied, now this is the tiebreaker here. So this player gets to choose first. Now, if this player chooses the mutated virus, they have to get rid of one of the cards from their discard pile. Now, this is the first turn, so they are going to have to get rid of their highest one. It's better when you can get rid of one of these and get a, um, you know, rid of a, a lower card than that but they're, they're stuck getting rid of a six if they get this one so th what they're going to they're going to just choose this one and they're going to take that card into their pile here and then this player then will take this and as i said they have to replace this card with the mutated cards because you're only ever going to have the uh, six cards with the viruses on this is now a mutated virus but at eight it's quite quite a high number it's going to outbid most people and then as i said this person is stuck with their with their two point thing here all right and then we go on to the next round so now this person would put this one um to one side to start to show like maybe i'll put it up here to show they, as they're creating sets and then the next round, we go again. So we get three. So we have another wild card here with uh, helical and uh, icosahedral. We have a genome, which is worth five straight points, just straight up five points. Now the helical here, you see it has all these different numbers at the bottom. And what this means is if you, you know, if you, at the end of the game, if you only have one of these cards in a set, then you have one point. If you have two of them, you have three points. If you have three, you have six points. If you have all six in the set, you get 21 points. And there may be bonus points available at some point too, but currently there's not. So players are going to put in their things. This time I'm just going to do it randomly. So everybody just puts in. Now remember, this isn't going to be done randomly for the players during the game. This is going to be very consciously done in terms of what our player is putting down based on what they're seeing, how important is it to them to get those things. So this player says not so important. They're putting down a number two. This player is putting down a number five. And this person is putting down a number three. Okay, so the middle player gets to choose again. Seeing as they already have one wild, they might as well go two wild. And they have the two there. And the maybe this player will take the genome, and this player will then take the helical. Okay, and then on to the next round. One, two, three. So now, again, we have another vaccine, but now we have that icosahedral here. And you see, the icosahedral only needs four cards for the set. And you're getting a plus six to it, too. So it's going to be worth 22 points for the set if you get it. So this player wants to be sure now to be getting that. Now they've already done their six and their five, so they'd probably at this point go as high as they can with their four. And other people are gonna to start to know that too, and this is where you can start to second guess the people. So they're going to do what they can here, knowing that their highest is a four, and they're really trying, but these people are going five. So again, these two players being tied now are going to this player rolls a nine, and this player rolls a five. So this player goes first. Not that it really matters too much. We both know what they're getting. They're each gonna get one of those, and now this player gets stuck with a virus. Oh, not in the box. They have to keep it. Okay. And sometimes you're going to get, so there's more mutated viruses. Here's your spherical envelope, 
more genomes. And so you get all these different kinds of cards. I want to show you one that's in here. So more vaccines, the increased virulence. The increased virulence, sometimes they're giving you bonuses to your points, but these are also can be added to your things so that way when you are rolling the dice for ties, you're getting a bonus to it. So in this case, say this player had this, this player rolled a nine, this player rolled a five, they roll with plus four to hit, so they now tied. So they may have to re-roll again, but say they had two, so this one's getting plus two points, but it's also getting plus two. So now they add those together, it's plus six to the roll. So if you get enough of those increased virulence cards, you're really going to be difficult to beat when it comes to um, those ties. So you can maybe use that to leverage that to your advantage. Uh, if you start to be smart and being paying attention to what cards other people might have, then you can start to figure out when you can tie them and easily beat them without having to give away your highest cards. But you keep playing the game till all of these cards are gone or until the class is done or until you just don't feel like playing anymore, I suppose. Uh, you total up all your points on your, your cards here, your things here, subtracting any points you get from the minuses from the vaccines. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Oh, spherical envelopes. Whoever at the end of the game has the most spherical envelopes gets t uh, 12 points. Who has the second most gets six points. And whoever has the least most in the game is minus six points. So that is, and if you know, multiple people have zero, then they all tie for least and they're all getting minus six. So you want to make sure that you're getting a few of these things. If not, try and go for the most of them. And that is how you play virulence. Virulence. I recommend it. I think it's a great game. I think there's a lot to this. I think Genius Games really shines when they do these science type games. Um, like I say, you know, they've got the cytosis, they've got the uh, ion compound building game, they've got the uh, periodic table of elements, and they also have one which I've kickstarted, which will be coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, to be honest. Um, hopefully this year sometime. But it's about uh, plant cells instead of the the cytosis was about the the, the animal cells. And this is now going to be the again about the plant cells. So curious to see how that one goes. So I'll be sure to keep you up on that one when that one comes in. And like I said, I'm also very interested to get a copy of that uh, periodic table of elements game. So that's high on my list of priorities because like I said, genius games, when it comes to their science games, they just do such a great job. It's, if you were going to use this one, then like I say, this it, it's a great way to introduce the, the students or yourself to the terminologies in, you know, involved here, the different parts of the cells and the different types of cells and the, the different types of viruses and things, the different terminologies that would be used in uh, discussing these. And so by playing the game and you know, really make sure what I would insist upon with the students is that they use the terminologies. Don't say, well, I'm taking the green one. No, I think it's the genome. Yeah, like the genome. So make sure that they're using those terminologies so that the more that they use them, the more repetition they're getting, the more it's going to get stuck inside their head and they're going to remember it. And then so they also start to make that connection between a visual of a picture with the word. And as you talk about them and explain them, it's going to have more to of a foundation to latch onto, to, to, to have that knowledge to, so they really understand. Um, I just think these are great ways to do learning where you can take things that are normally sort of dry, boring textbook work. I mean, this is, this is a, a far better way to be learning and I'm sure the students are going to appreciate it too. So if you are new to the channel, then what I'm doing is I am putting out content on a weekly basis about topics of games, where I'm reviewing games, uh, game-based learning, gamification, all about how we can use games and, you know, fun in our, in our pedagogy to make the students more interested, more accessible to learning. So if this sounds like something good to you, then please do remember to hit like and subscribe down below. It really does help the channel. I really do appreciate it. Maybe even hit that little bell too, to uh, get an indication as to when I'm putting the new content out, which like I said, is on a weekly basis. And if you have any other ideas for topics you might like to see on the channel, whether it's games you might like to see or whether you want to see playthroughs of a game or whether you want to me to discuss a particular topic around gamification, game-based learning, please leave that message down in the comment section below. I'm happy to help out. I'm trying to provide as many learning resources as I can to help out you, the fellow teacher and parents who are also trying to get your students to learn at home. And that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. Until next time, I am Craig Thompson with your host on Teaching with Board Games saying, thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me? We could have done it all so easily. 
virulence.